Hey Brandon, cheers for coming in. No problem. Um, and you've kindly come in to help wrap, or should I say, <laughs> wrap my bike. Why should you wrap your bike? Why ride wrap? What's unique about it? What's different? So ride wrap, we are a frame protection company. We make um, different kind of levels of frame protection. What we're most known for is our tailored kits, which is a make, model, size, and frame material specific kit that covers up to about 96% of the bike. I've had bikes before and I've wished I've got them wrapped when I've had them for a month or so because you get these little micro scratches in mm -hmm. the paintwork and I'm guessing this is going to stop all of that stuff. For sure. So kind of little abrasions, rubbing knee pads on the top tube or something like that, throw them in your van, just riding. Even without trying it, it gets all those kind of little swirl marks and, and scratches and whatnot there as well. So Ride Wrap Film, we just released our, our Ride Wrap branded film, our very own. And we made that just because we found that automotive film um, from, from different brands just wasn't quite getting what we wanted to do. The Ride Wrap film is a thicker product, giving more durability. It still has the self-healing properties. So all those tiny little scuff marks, scratches, kind of disappear, they never happen. Um, it's super hydrophobic as well. It should make cleaning your bike much, much easier. Neat, and what I've noticed in the kits is there's loads of stuff that comes with it. So. Exactly. You don't need to, or the theory is that you don't need to go and buy stuff that you wouldn't normally have in your house. Right? Yeah, for sure. So in theory, the only thing you should need to be able to wrap your bike is a spray bottle. Inside there, if you open up the box, it's got the instructions printed on the pack. It comes with a kit, the diagram, so you've got a very detailed kind of description of where you should put the pieces, as long as a little toolkit as well. So in there, you'll get a squeegee, your microfiber, cleaning wipes, um, your install solution concentrate, which you mix with the water to help you squeegee the bubbles out, as well as some decals. So you don't need to go and buy some baby shampoo? No right? baby shampoo, that's it, all in there. <laughs> everything you need. What tips have you got for anyone that might want to wrap their bike but is wondering about it? If you are wrapping a used or a ridden bike, I think the, the biggest thing is just to make sure it's nice and clean. Wash it down thoroughly. Make sure all the kind of areas that hold grease as well, so around your um, rear axle, around the bottom bracket, your headset, just really give it a good wash to make sure that nothing's going to come out and get underneath the wrap and contaminate it. Some of the areas look like they'd be fairly easy, like this one, but it looks like it's way more fiddly Definitely. when you start getting to, to down here. So should we get it wrapped? Let's do it. Cool, man. So to start, we just want to take off anything that's removable from the bike. So that is the wheels, the chain, any removable guards, things like the rear mech, the cranks, the forks, leave them on. All of our kits are designed so that the average Joe at home can fit them themselves. Sometimes they don't have the tools or the capability to take these things off the bike. So we've designed around them. Next, what you want to do is grab your ride wrap pre-install cleaning wipes and just go over the bike really thoroughly. All the kind of areas that I mentioned before, around the rear axle, around the bottom bracket, the head tube, just make sure it's really detailed, really clean, so that that way there's no contaminants that get underneath the wrap. I should probably say one thing worth mentioning is that not all paints are created equal. So sometimes you can end up taking some paint off the bike with the alcohol wipe. So just be sure to test it on different areas just to make sure that that's not gonna happen. What are the worst brands? I can't say that. <laughs> <laughs> So this is potentially one of the most important parts of wrapping a bike, right? So we're going to mix up our install solution. What the install solution does is delays the adhesion process on the back of the film, which allows us to reposition and squeegee out the bubbles when we're putting the piece down. When doing this, we just need to make sure that we get the right amount. Um, it is a detergent or a, a soap, if you like. So if you do wash the bike down with any cleaners, PTs included, Really make sure that the bike gets thoroughly rinsed because if there's any residue or anything like that left over, it's gonna delay the adhesion process and the piece just won't ever stick down. So, best way to do this is with a nice, fresh, clean one liter bottle of water. We're gonna slip off just the corner there and we're gonna very carefully, very carefully, squeeze out the packet here so that we get a drop that big in the water. Right, so that's one drop. For a gloss bike, we're gonna do two to three drops. For a matte bike, one to two. The reason for that is, if you look at the finish of a gloss bike underneath the microscope, it's gonna look like glass, super smooth, super shiny, which means it's gonna tack quite a lot. If you look at a matte finish underneath the microscope, it's kinda gonna look like sandpaper. There's lots of kind of little air pockets and whatnot for, I guess, air, essentially, to sit, which is not gonna get as good of a tack, right? So, three drops for a gloss bike here. So I've already put one in, two, 
three. And that's all you need, simple. Give it a shake, give it a spray, make sure it comes through and we're good to go. We've got our kit laid out, we've got our install guide. You'll see that it's all numbered. It's like that for a reason, right? Follow the order and all the pieces will line up nicely together. You'll notice that all the kits start with number one being on the rear end. The reason for that is that the rear end's much harder to fit. It's tighter radiuses, it's smaller pieces, a little more difficult to get it done. So the theory is if you start on the rear end, it's a little bit harder. By the time you get to the front end and all the pieces that you see kind of around the head tube and the down tube and whatnot, um, you should be much better at it. So it should be much easier to fit. We've got piece number one, we have a solution. You can give it a spray. The wetter, the better. Water is your friend here. So the more water, the less bubbles you're gonna get. So spray the bike, spray the film. And then we're gonna line it up on the frame. So. I normally, right. So we're gonna use the piece to check against the different characteristics of the frame. So you can see the carbon does a little wiggle there, moves onto the, the bridge. Right, we've got a guard down the bottom, roll it over, make sure we're all good. When we're happy with that, grab our squeegee. Right, and off we go. So we start in the middle, squeegee all the water out to the edges, you know, on each way. You can be quite rough with it, the film's pretty thick and durable, so it's not gonna, it shouldn't bunch or, or scratch or anything like that. Right, so we get to there. You can see I've got a little air bubble in here, right? So before I start rolling over the top, just peel this back a little bit and roll it over. Cool, pretty happy with that. If I wasn't happy with that, super simple. All I have to do is just gently, slowly peel up the piece nice and carefully we don't want to stretch the film and we don't want to potentially take any any paint off just keep going keep going keep going right give it another spray on the frame as well remember the wetter the better more water and go again and you can probably do that as many times as you like um, the only risk you run with doing that is getting contaminants underneath the film. Right, so I've lined that up a little bit nicer. Same process again, start with the squeegee from the middle, go to each side, and we're good to go. When we get to rolling over, I'm gonna get the long bit of the film here, put a bit of tension on it, I'm gonna start the part of squeegee already, and roll from the face over the top. That's gonna take out that little air bubble section that sits on this edge, and make sure we're nice and completely squeegeed. It's the technical term. So when I finish this piece, we'll compare it against the other chain stay, or seat stay, sorry, and uh, you can tell me for yourself. So that's all squeegeed out. I'm really happy with it. I've got no bubbles. It looks nice and neat. What you'll see is there's some little bits here that just kind of aren't stuck down yet. This is where the microfiber comes in. And what we want to do is just carefully run your microfiber over the top, being sure not to put the fiber on the underside of the film. And we're just gonna dry that seam out. And what you'll find, just like magic, it's all stuck down. The other thing you can do is just leave it. You'll see these bits. We can come back to them once we've finished the rest of the rear end and get them all stuck down at the one time. The other thing worth mentioning as well is if if um, you find that the piece is just slipping around loads and it's not sticking or whatever, maybe have a look at redoing your install solution mix. Tip your water out and go with two drops instead of three or add an extra drop if you find it's tacking too much, right? It's not the be all and end all, but little changes like that will make the install go a lot smoother if you're having trouble. We've got a very little piece here that sits in the middle of this bridge. Um, in this case, wetter is not better. Um, the smaller the piece, the less water you use. And the reason for that is it's just gonna slide around a little bit. So if you just put a little bit less water, you get a bit more tack and it's a little bit easier to get stuck down. So Rob was just asking me about kind of the best environment to be wrapping in. So 
a workshop like this, nice and clean, nice and warm. Areas with, you know, a clean bench that you can put the sheet down on so that you're not bringing up any you know, dirt or dust or contaminants underneath the film. And a little bit warmer as well. So our film is a little bit thicker than most, therefore it is a little more temperature sensitive. So if you're wrapping in a cold environment, say you know, less than 15, 16 degrees, what you're going to find is that the film's just a little bit thick, a little bit rigid, and it's going to be kind of a little bit hard to work with. If you don't have the, the leisure of, of working in a nice temperature controlled environment, um, grab yourself a heat gun and just flash the frame with a little bit of heat just to warm it up a little bit. And you can do the same thing with the film as well. Um, obviously, just being careful not to blow any dust or, or anything like that underneath it as well. So I've, uh, I've been a bit hasty and I've put the piece down. I found some bubbles stuck back up here. So what I'm going to do to get rid of those, um, it's much easier to do so when they've just put the piece down. So I'm going to peel the film up again, just really nice and gentle, being careful not to scratch it. Uh, sorry, not to stretch it. All right. Pull it all the way back to the edge where the bubbles are. Pull it up. Nice and gentle again. I'm going to spray it. All right. And then I can have another go. This time being sure to squeeze you all the bubbles out and get it down nice and clean. In here, obviously you've, you've ridden the bike a bit, Rob, before we got to wrap it today. You can see where kind of the dirt and mud and, and whatnot has scuffed up the paint a little bit. So we'll do a little bit of a, a before and after. So you see lots of scuffs and scratches. I'm gonna put our piece on. Nice and shiny again. How cool is that? So at this point, I've finished the rear end. Um, so now what I'm going to do is grab my heat gun. Uh, if you don't have a heat gun at home, a hairdryer does just as good a job. And I'm just going to go over the edges of all the pieces that aren't quite stuck down properly. And the idea here is not to stretch or shape or the, anything like that with a piece. Simply all we want to do is just dry it out so it sticks down nicely. So heat gun on. I'm going to keep my hand behind the heat gun so I can feel how hot it is. If your hand's too hot, then the film's too hot. Now we're on to the front end. Bigger pieces, more water, right? It's gonna be easier to sque squeegee it out. And with the front end, we kind of wanna put three pieces on at the same time. So we're gonna do our top tube here, all right? We're also gonna put on our down tube and our head tube so that we can get the joins between the pieces lined up nice and neat, which makes the kit look pretty, pretty hot, right? So top tube first. What we're gonna do is just squeegee out the top section here. Sometimes what we'll get are these little kind of ghost bubbles here, all right? And that's the same process as before. Just lift the film up, give it another little square underneath, and squeegee the bubble back out, and off they go. Right, that's all the squeegeeing I'm gonna do for now on the top tube. I'm going to get the wings here and just lay them over just so they don't get any contaminants. And worth noting as well, if there's any characteristics on the frame, like obviously there's the, uh, the heads up display here, um, usually the, the headset cup, something like that. We're looking to position the piece at least three mil away from it to have all the pieces line up nice and neat. Cool. So top tube's on. Now I'm going to grab my head tube piece. And what I'm looking for is just to align this little join here so that I have a nice, even three mil gap here. Now at the moment, I'm probably at five mil. So what that's telling me is that my top tube is not far enough this way, right? So in that case, because I've only squeegeed the top section, I can peel the wings up nice and gently. All right, and then I'm going to carefully just peel off the top here. 
Again, be nice and gentle. Don't want to stretch the film or peel any paint or clear coat off the bike. Okay. And then I give it another spray. Lots of water. And I'm good to have another shot. Now this time, I check my pieces. You can see I've got a nice three mil gap. It looks really nice and neat there. I'm just gonna zip tie these cables out of the way, just so I've got a bit of a clear working space for when I do the rest of the head tube here. So what I'm doing here is just laying the piece over and just checking it against, again, the other characteristics of the frame. So this cable port here, all right, checking it against the other piece just to make sure I've got a nice uniform join, all right, before I start squeegeeing. And that's gonna help me just save a bit of time if I do have it in the wrong place at all. I've got the, the head tube on now, and I've just got the wings of that just kind of laid loose so that that way I can move or adjust anything when I, after I put the down tube piece on. All right, again, nice and wet, plenty of water. Now, you can see I've got the down tube on an angle slightly back towards me. So why the reason I do that is, is I can put this piece up here and whilst I'm trying to align it, this part here is a little easier to move around and it doesn't get stuck to the frame straight away. All right, so. Right, so we got the top lined up nicely. Cool, and what I'm gonna do is just lay this piece over and just check that it lines up with the bottle bosses and everything else that's going on, on over this side of the film, uh, over this side of the frame. Uh, if it's not, again, simple, all I gotta do, peel it back a touch, gently, spray again, and I'm good to go. If it's taking you a bit of time to, uh, to squeegee the water out, best just to make our life easier as we go around further, just peel back to where you've squeegeed, grab your bottle, give it a spray, and that's just gonna help squeegee those bubbles out even more. Bit weird, isn't it? That more water equals less bubbles. So you can see we've lined the top tube, the head tube, and the down tube up at the same time. And you see our joins at the front there, a nice, tight, uniform, looking nice and clean, three mil all the way through. The finish on the, uh, on the, the top of the film there is um, super, super shiny. And nice, it's really, really matte on the matte film as well. So you notice some brands, it's almost like a, a satin finish or something. Um, but yeah, with, uh, with the new Ride Wrap film, the bike protection film, uh, our matte finish is much more matte. It can be pretty rough with it. The, the theory is the harder you push, the more bubbles come out, which means there's less time spent pulling the piece back up. So down to the last piece. All wrapped, all the pieces are on the bike. Um, what I'm gonna do now is grab my microfiber, go over the whole bike, make sure it's nice and dry, clear off all the pieces. And then I'm gonna grab my heat gun, just like I did before. And any pieces that aren't just quite stuck down, I'm gonna go over those. I'm also gonna go over every seam, just to make sure it's all stuck, all heat locked. And then I'm gonna sit, leave it sit for about 12 hours um, before I ride it, give the adhesive a really good chance to cure, and then we're good. Your bike's protected. Everyone loves a little sticker.